I swear that's straight, me straight, me straight. Me. You look into my eyes, you can see what I see. If you can say the world won't be the same without me, then we call that straight, me straight. And that's a blessing. But wait a second, look, while we on the subject, let me ask a question. Hello everybody, welcome to the Uzi Sports Show. I'm Jair Luzi with today's guest, Dominic Chaccio, running back and linebacker at Farmingdale High School. Thanks so much for being here. Dominic. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, and obviously, Dominic, these past few weeks have been hectic. Yeah. I mean, with the announcement of no fall sports in Nassau, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, what was the initial reaction for you? I mean, I was I was heartbroken at first because I was, I was so ready for the season. I've been all during quarantine. I've been lifting, getting back in uh, shape just getting on the field with my boys like when we were able to. Uh, thank God there was a turf field right around where we live. So we were able to go over there, run rounds and stuff like that, and just stay all together. Yeah, and not only do you play football, you also play lacrosse, you're a great lacrosse player, but they say they might move it to the spring. But obviously, you're a multi-sport athlete, so what do you think that really means for you? It would be tough. I mean, like as of now, like I've heard that it might be conflicting, so we might have to pick one or the other. That would be a hard decision because I've been playing both sports since I was like four years old. So it would be a very tough decision for me to pick which one I'd want to play. Yeah, and obviously your town, big into football and really just big into like every sport it seems yeah. like over there farming. They love yeah. their sports. Yeah, so do. I mean, what does this really mean for your town? You know, all those sports just conflicting like you said. Yeah, I mean, for our town, like Friday Night Lights for us football, <laughs> big thing. Like all my friends that don't play, like they're like... They're, they're really going to miss it, like, especially our senior year, like, even for like, us players, like, we've been going to those Friday night games since we were five, six years old, just waiting, waiting for that, that like, senior year and those Friday night games, and it's just, like, shocking that we might not even be able to do that. In your junior year, actually, you guys did make it to the Nassau County title, so what was really the key to that title run? Well, the title one was from my sophomore year when we got a little embarrassed by Oceanside and we didn't think that was going to happen to us. We thought it was going to be a much closer game. But once that game ended and we got back on the bus, we knew that we wanted them again. And the regular season, we got them. And then we met them back in the semis. And we gave them what they gave to us last year. And we just had to do it. And we just built, like over the summer, our uh, athletic trainer, he does conditioning with us and we all ball down the conditioning. And then we have our Monday run days. We all ball out on those and we lift after. And then just during practice, like we were just all mentally prepared for that, for that run. And we brought it every week to practice and games. And we got there, beat Oceanside. And then unfortunately we lost to a tough Freeport team in the conference championship. But, I mean, that's what it is. It just happened like that, and just got to move on. Yeah, you mentioned that big victory over Oceanside in the semifinals. Yeah. But the thing that everyone seemed to really talk about, obviously you guys put up a lot of points, mm -hmm. but you guys shut them down on defense. I yeah. mean, you were a linebacker, you played great that game, so it was really the key to shutting down McKee and that explosive Oceanside offense. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, McKee, just, you know, containing him, make sure he doesn't roll out of the pocket, try to find an open receiver and just getting to him, and then receiver-wise, just locking down the receivers. I mean, they had uh, Danny Mullen, he was a great receiver for them, and I think we locked him down pretty good with our cornerbacks, and safety's getting good coverage over the top on him, and just getting, like, through with the linemen, getting sacks on him, and that's really it. Yeah, and in the regular season when you guys went against them, it was a big game for you individually. Yeah. So, you know, what was really the key to having maybe your best game of the season right there? I mean, I don't want to say there's any key having like my biggest game of the season like it's never like planned like oh I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that I mean obviously in my head like I'm thinking like yeah I want to do this but like it all just came naturally like whatever there was there like I had that kick, big kickoff return like that was all blocking like with from my from my uh, other teammates and then I had my big run at the end of the game that secured the game for us that was help with Jordan Smichael and Lorenzo Ramos which were big keys of that play blocking on the outside and all of our linemen too and then on my receiving play, that was from uh, Nickel and Dean, just finding me wide open, and I had a good route run, and he just hit me in the corner of the end zone. 
Even also them, I gotta ask. I mean, you guys traveled to Oceanside that game, mm -hmm. and they're really known for having one of the craziest student sections. Yeah. You know, they really pride themselves on that, mm -hmm. and they don't lose many home games. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how did it feel to go over there and defeat them in front of their big home crowd? Uh, I felt great. Like before, they were chirping at us. I mean, I just closed it out. I didn't think that anything. <laughs> like I didn't want like that doesn't get into my head. So for that not to get into my head, I think that's a big factor. Like with maybe some other people that could, and that could maybe hurt them. But for me, honestly doesn't get into my head. I just focus on my pregame, do what I have to do, tune every, all that out, and just play my game. Yeah, and after that junior season, we fast forward a bunch of months, and this pandemic hits. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it was really tough, but what have you really done during that time to really just stay in shape of football? Well, I mean, in the beginning, like, I wasn't really able to get, like, much lift in, so, like, we'd, I, I'd go, like, around my area, in my house, I'd go uh, running around my area, do, you know, pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, all that, planks. Just more like core and body stuff. And then uh, my old Pee Wee Hawks coach actually hit me up and he had a li uh, lift set in his house and I've been benching, squatting with him, doing all those uh, power things. And then the gym's opened up and I'm back at the gym like five days a week and getting back into better shape. Yeah, and obviously working out like that was obviously really tough during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but for the lacrosse side of things, you guys actually got some stuff in. Yeah. So, I mean, what was your summer lacrosse season that you like? So, I got to play four tournaments total. I mean, obviously, we're supposed to be scheduled to play a little more for both my travel and school team. But, I mean, it was great being able to finally play other kids, getting just to play the sport <laughs> of lacrosse or just any, just the sport in general. And, yeah, it was just great getting back out there, being able to play a sport again after, like, a couple months of just nothing. And now, Dominic, what has the recruiting process really been like so far, though? It's been it's been slow in the beginning during like quarantine and stuff like that, beginning of Corona, because obviously like there wasn't much for anybody to do and get looked at and stuff like that. But then, more towards as it was getting into it and things were going like down more, I started getting in contact with some football coaches, which was a first for me, and talking to them, going to some Zoom calls that they had, learning like what they're all about, their offense, defense, all that. And then getting back into lacrosse, some of the lacrosse coaches were getting back in contact with, which was good for prospect days that were coming up. So, I mean, it's it's been going pretty good. Yeah, you mentioned lacrosse and football, actually. Mm -hmm. So what has really the thought process been like for maybe playing both sports in college? Yeah, I mean, if I could play both and find the right fit to play both, I'd do, I would do it. I mean, I've been playing both since I was four years old. So, I mean, like, people come up to me, like, family and stuff, friends, they'll be like, so what's your favorite? I'm like, I really don't have a favorite. Like, like I've been playing both since I was four. Like, I both love the game equally. Like, it would be hard to make a decision to pick one or the other in college. So if I could find that right fit for college and play both, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about recruiting, obviously. And in the game of football, obviously, we come from New York, yeah. you know, the state. Mm -hmm. It's a lot tougher to go to college for football than it is for lacrosse. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in your football game, what do you think really separates yourself from others? My speed, my athleticism, my strength, I think, separates me from a lot of other players. And from last season to this upcoming season, hopefully that there is, I think I'll be totally prepared, a lot stronger, faster, and be more athletic than a lot of these other kids on the, team, on the field. And if there is a 2020 football season, or even 2021, at least we hope that you get on the field, obviously. You know, where are the individual expectations going to be for yourself? I mean, obviously being the best player I can be for my team and just on the field. And with you putting out that uh, preseason Thorpe Award candidates, I want to be that guy that wins a Thorpe Award. I mean, ever since I was little, I've been dreaming about it. So, I mean, for that to come true, that would be a blessing. Yeah, and also for the next season, obviously, the big thing with Farmingdale is the game against Massapequa. I mean, talk to me about that rivalry a little bit. I mean, ever since we played Pee Wee football, like, I mean, it's been back and forth. Like, we won, they won one year, and then JV, they beat us, and then my sophomore season, we beat them, and then our junior season last year, they got the edge on us. But, I mean, for us, if there wasn't a football season, either coming this uh, fall or the spring, I think it would be devastating to go out of Farmerdale not being able to play at least one more time against Massapequa because, I mean, they're right across the highway. And, I mean, I know I'm friends with some of the kids on the team, so not being able to go against them, 
that one last time would be a little heartbreaking. And now, Dominic, this is one question I love asking. If you could schedule one game against anybody in New York State, public, private, absolutely anybody, to your schedule, who would it be and why? I'm going to have to stay in conference in my schedule. I'm going to have to keep with Massapequa throughout the tradition since I was little. I mean, I've always just thought about playing Massapequa just every year. I don't think I'd want to play anybody else but Massapequa. And... This question, I actually haven't asked on my show yet, but um, nothing to start to ask because there might be no season this year, unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, what was your favorite high school football moment? Well, I have a couple. My first one would be in, uh, sophomore year for homecoming, actually. I scored three touchdowns, had 173 yards, and broke the sophomore rushing record in a single game. Then I'd have to go with jun my junior season, playing Oceanside in the regular season, and scoring those three touchdowns. And... Uh, then back in junior season, in the semis, getting back at them for what they did to us in our season last year in the semis. So I think those would be my top three memories of football. Well, Dominic, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, that'll do it for today. I'm Jared Veluzzi. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Have a good one.